In a library, we can't read a book until we find that book. So, too, with our HTML elements. For our JavaScript code to read the value of an HTML element, we first need to find that element. Then we can read the value from the found element. As an example, for our guess a number game, we find the input element and then read its value. When we have the value, we can determine if the guess was too high, too low, or just right. There are several ways to find an HTML element on the page with JavaScript. If we want to find one element by its unique ID attribute, we use the getElementById method available using the document object. This method returns the one element with the defined ID. If we instead want to find a set of elements by their class attribute, we use the getElementsByClassName method. This method returns a collection of elements that have a class attribute set to the defined class name. If we have more complex selection requirements and want to use a CSS selector to find an element, we use the query selector method. Any syntax you use as a CSS selector, you can use here. This method returns the first element that matches the defined CSS selector. We won't go more into CSS selectors in this course because we covered them in detail in the Gentle Introduction to CSS for Beginners course earlier in this series. In many cases, we want just one particular element, so the get element by ID is often the best choice. But let's try out both of these first two options. Before we can work with an HTML element in our JavaScript code, we must first find that element in the HTML. For our guess a number game, we'll start by locating the button, because we don't yet have the input element. The guess a number game is still open in VS Code. Open Explorer. Double click the index.html file to open it. And if you don't already have the JavaScript file open in the scripts folder, double click on the index.js file to open it. Then close Explorer for more space. If you don't have it running, click the Go Live button in the bottom right corner of VS Code to launch the page in the browser. I already have it running, so it shows the port number here. In the HTML file, let's add an ID attribute to our Guess button so we can find the element by its ID. ID equal Guess button. And let's add another button with the same class so we can get multiple elements by class name. Under the div element, let's add a section element to put our new button in a separate section. Within the section element, we'll add a button element. For the content, we'll type play again so the user can select to play the game again. We'll give the button a class of btn, matching the guess button. We can see in the browser that we now have two buttons. Are we ready to find the buttons with JavaScript? Let's start with get element by ID. We see here that our guess button has an ID of guess button. Click on the index.js file. We'll declare the variables for all the elements we need here at the top, so the declarations are easy to find. Let's declare a variable to hold a reference to the guess button we find. We'll declare it as a constant because it shouldn't change, and we'll call it guess button. This variable will reference the found button object. We set the variable equal to document dot. The document here refers to our web page. Notice that when we type the dot, we see the many properties and methods available for our document. We want to call the getElementById method. We pass into that method the ID of the element we want, which is guess button. After we find the button, we can read its content. For a button, the content is the text shown in the button. Add a console.log, provide some descriptive text, and display guess button dot text content. Notice again that when we click the dot, VS Code lists the many properties and methods available on our button object. Looking at the browser console, that looks right. We found our button element and now have a variable that references that button. Next, let's try out the get elements by class name. Recall that our buttons both have a class name of btn. 
Let's declare a variable that holds the collection of all elements with the BTN class attribute. We'll again declare it as a constant, and we'll call it buttons. We set it equal to document.getElements by class name. Note that elements is plural in this method. Then we pass in our style class name, which is BTN. This method returns a collection which may contain zero, one, or many elements. In our example, we know that there are two elements with the BTN class attribute, so this button's collection should contain two elements. How do we show the text content for each element in the collection? We need to loop through the collection and display each one. Think of a loop like processing down your email, one message at a time. For each message, you decide to file it, reply to it, or delete it. Then you go to the next email message in the list and repeat your decision process until all of your messages, or all of today's messages, are processed. I'll paste a sample loop and we can talk through it. There are several different types of loops in JavaScript. This one is called a for of loop due to the for and of keywords. Like looking through your email, this loop gives us each element from our collection of buttons, one at a time, and we can do something with it. The loop starts with the for keyword, followed by parentheses. Inside the parentheses, we declare a variable that references the item in the collection. Since our collection is a set of HTML elements, I name the variable ELE. This variable references each item in the collection, one at a time. The first time through the loop, it references the first item, next time through the loop, the second item, and so on. We use const to declare the variable because we don't want to change the variable within the body of the loop. Next is the of keyword and the name of the collection we want to loop through. In this example, it's the collection of elements returned by get elements by class name. For is a block statement, so we define curly braces for the block. Inside the block, we add one or more statements, defining what to do with each element as we loop through the collection. Within the loop, we reference the current element using our variable. In this example, we log out its text content. Looking in the browser, we see the content of our two buttons. We've now found the element or elements we want to work with, and stored a reference to them in constants. Since we declared them with global scope, we can access them in any other parts of our code. Let's leave our setup the way it is and jump back to the slides. So, before we can work with any HTML element, we first find the element in the HTML. Use getElementById to find an element by its ID attribute. Since this finds one specific element, this is often the best choice when we want that one element. Use getElementsByClassName to find all elements with a defined class attribute name. This returns a collection of elements. Or use QuerySelector to find an element matching a CSS selector. This returns the first HTML element it finds that matches the selector. Now that we can find an element, let's read its value. If you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe.